to Casey in Southern California. By the way, we finally figured out I'm in San Diego. Casey and June are in the LA area. The uh, Moment of Truth, they're in um, kind of middle Southern California. So, and our last our last group, Freedom Heart, is also in Southern California. So look, this is the California takeover. We finally have one. And tonight we have none other than the man, the legend, not in his own mind, but in the minds of all of us who love him and love to eat his pizza on Monday nights. Everybody, <laughs> please welcome Casey Bean. Good evening, sir. Hello. Am I up already? Yeah, it's your turn. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. And I thought we, I thought we had like ten more uh, music guests. Well, <laughs> I was, I was gonna, I was gonna let the night, you know, pan out, but hopefully, I might get one song at the end. But for right now, that's not. It, yeah. it doesn't need to happen. What needs to happen right now is that we need to hear the word from my dear Holy Spirit anointed and loved friend Casey. Casey, take it away. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Mm. There we go. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Yeah, my name is Casey. I'm coming to you live from Bellflower, California, United States of America. Uh, this evening, I wanted to talk with you guys. It's in uh, John chapter 5. It's about um, a man healed at the pool of Bethesda. Jesus healed the man that was crippled, a, a lame man. He was crippled. And Jesus went there and healed him. We'll look, be looking at um, John chapter 11. Oh, John chapter 5, starting with verse 2. Sorry about that. It says, Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches, and these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been, had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one, no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. So Jesus didn't say anything like, Oh, I'll, I'll help you into the water. He just told him, arise, take up your bed and walk. Just by his word, he said, arise, and this man was healed. He didn't have to go through any kind of a ritual or anything. Just by his word, he was able to say, arise, take up your bed and walk. And so the man did so. Now, uh, Jesus went around healing many others also. And um, I was going to look at, um, uh-oh, sorry about that. I was going to look at um, John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist, he's the one that baptized Jesus, and, and um, he was going around um, spreading spreading the good news and stuff and the and the the um the the Jewish rulers they didn't like him they put him in in prison and while he was in prison he started having um having his doubts you know he, he knew that Jesus was supposed to be the the Messiah but their idea that 
that Jesus was going to come and set them free. He, they, their idea was that he was going to come and be the be the king of the Jews and set them free from the the rule of the the Romans. The Romans were ruling over the um, um, Israel at that time. So he was going to come and set them. The, pe the, the people thought that Jesus was going to come and be king and, and set them free from, from the rule of the Romans. But that wasn't the reason why Jesus had come. And John the Baptist, he was in prison and he started having his doubts. Now, he had already been told by the Spirit that, that Jesus was the Messiah. But he started going through moments of doubt while he was in prison. So I want to look at John the Baptist sends his messengers to Jesus. That's in uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 11. And it says, And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind see and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. So this is was Jesus. As a matter of fact, just before he did this, he had been healing people. Like day and night, there were multitudes of people coming to him for healing. So these these two people, these two uh, messengers from from John the Baptist, quite possibly would have witnessed some of that happening. And so Jesus told him to go tell him what you see about the blind that they they see, they're receiving their sight. The lame are walking now, and the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the and and the dead are raised up. The dead are being raised to life. Of all things, you know, all these different infirmities that people have, he was even able to raise the dead people. What a miracle worker. Amen, amen. So anyways, um, now th this was a, um, a prophecy from Isaiah way back in the Old Testament, hundreds of years before Jesus even came into this world as a baby. And... Um, and having having knowing the scriptures, they would have known that what this meant was that he was the Christ. They they should have recognized him as the Christ that he was able to do all these healings. Because at that time, nobody was able to heal. They were able to heal people. They might have been able to heal, but nobody ever healed a blind person. So to be able to make the blind to see, that is a real miracle in itself. And um, I, I wanted to look at one. Um, it's in Mark chapter 10. I believe. Yeah, Jesus heals blind Bartimaeus. Mark chapter 10, starting with verse 46, says, Now they came to Jericho as he went out to Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. So he said to this man, he just says, your faith has made you well. 
He didn't have to do anything. There was nothing he had to do. Just by Jesus' word, your faith has made you well. And also notice that this man, he was saying, have mercy on me. Well, the, at the beginning of our of our story about in um, the Pool of Bethesda, the Pool of Bethesda, actually in Hebrew, it means house of mer mercy. I believe that's what it is, house of mercy. Because there was a lot of um, people with infirmities, with sicknesses and lame people and blind that were in that area and, and they were waiting to be healed. Of course, by the stirring of the water, but that wasn't what they needed. What All they really needed was Jesus. I want to look again at um, a deaf man that was that received um, his hearing in uh, Mark chapter seven. Starting with verse thirty one. Yeah, Jesus heals a deaf mute. Says again, departing from the region of Tyre and Sidon, he came through the midst of the region of the, of the Decapolis, of the Sea of Galilee. Then they brought to him one who was deaf, and had an impediment in his speech. So not only was he deaf, but he couldn't speak either. He was mute. They begged him to put his hand on him, and he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears. He spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephathathra, that is, be open. Immediately his ears were open, and the impediment of his tongue was loosed, and he spoke plainly. Then he commanded them that they should tell no one, but the more he commanded them, the more widely they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He makes both the death deaf to hear and the mute to speak so here he, he makes the deaf people to hear people that can't hear he makes them able to hear and the people that can't speak makes them to be able to speak also Okay, now I want to look at um, John ch chapter 11. In uh, John chapter 11, starting with verse 38, this is where he raises the dead. He could even raise the dead. That's what they said about him. He makes the, the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, the lepers cleansed, and he even raised the dead. So I wanted to look at Lazarus real quickly. Uh, John chapter 11. I think it is, yes. Starting with verse 17. So Lazarus had already been died and, and in, the, in the tomb. It says, so when he came, when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Beth was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary, that was uh, Lazarus' uh, sisters, Martha and Mary, to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And that would be the question for tonight. Do you believe? That is our faith. 
Our faith, our faith is that those who believe in Jesus, we will never die. Even though our body dies, our body perishes, um, our spirit will live on and we will be forever with the Lord in heaven. Then she said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and coming comforting her when they they saw that mary rose up quickly and went out followed her saying she is going to the tomb to weep there then mary came where jesus was and saw him she fell down at his feet saying to him lord if you had been here my brother would not have died therefore when jesus saw her weeping and the jews who came with her weeping he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and he said where have you laid him they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Which is the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus, Jesus himself wept because he had compassion on them. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb it was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the man, dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Lose him and let him go. So you see, he raised the dead. He, he, he healed the blind and he raised the dead. And then I, I, I think, you know, at the Pool of Bethesda, there was a lot of people that were in ail, ailing people um, with all kinds of sicknesses that he heals. And then I think of us as, as people you know in the bible it says those who have who are not sick have no need of a of a physician and, but the bible also says be careful if you think you stand lest you fall some people they don't know it they don't know that they are that they have um sicknesses that they are that they are crippled like how is your walk with the lord are are, are, do you have a good firm walk with the Lord or are you lame or how, how are you with with his word are you able to hear his word he says when um people that don't know him when they hear his word they they can hear his word but they don't perceive what it is they don't understand what it is that he, he is saying Then and it says right here um, in Ephesians chapter two verse one, and it says, "And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind." were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. So it, it's not just a few people. He's telling this is talking about we were all at one time. We were all at one time. We were dead in our trespasses. 
that before Christ came into our life, each one of us were, were dead. And we were heading for destruction. We were heading for hell, death, and the grave before Christ came into our life. But there is a hope for us because he talks about how by his spirit, he is able to make us alive again. It says, you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Yeah, we used to be like that. But God, who is rich in mercy, rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. It says, by grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. It is the gift, the gift of God that he has given us. Now, it, it is by his Holy Spirit that he is doing these things, the Holy Spirit in our lives. And I, I wanted to look at um, John chapter 3. It speaks of the new birth. It says, talking about there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, the, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So they must have seen all these different signs that he was doing, all these healings and stuff. No one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can these things be? Yeah, how can these things be? It is by his Holy Spirit. Now, it, the Holy Spirit, at one time, Jesus was with his disciples. And he, he breathed on them. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. And that's what we need to do. We need to receive that Holy Spirit. And that way, um, that that's what it means to be born again. Also, um, much like um, when God created Adam in the garden, he formed him out of the dust of the ground. And then he breathed life into his nostrils. He, he breathed the spirit into his nostrils. And that's how he came alive. And he's doing that for us too. And we wonder how, how can um, we be, be born again? In the Bible it says, ask and you will receive. Seek, you will find. Knock and the door will be open. He says, which one of you having a, a, a son, a child, if he asked for bread, would give him a stone? Or if he asked for, for an egg, you give, give him a serpent? He's talking about, you know, taking care of your children. He says, well, you being evil know how to uh, give good things to your children. How much more will God give of the Holy Spirit to, to those who ask? And that's all you have to do is ask for the Holy Spirit of God. He says, keep at, but he says, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. And I believe that's what it is to be born again, is to ask God to have that Holy Spirit to come live within you. And ask, you don't just ask one time, 
Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. And he will be faithful and give it to you. And he knows our hearts also. He knows if you are, are, are truly seeking after him. And he will enter in and he will he will dwell within us and have fellowship with us and teach us these things so that we will have an understanding. Our eyes will be open. We'll be able to start seeing the things of the kingdom of God. And our ears will be open. At one time, Jesus was speaking to the people in parables. And he says, why do you speak to them in parables? And he says, well, because it is, it is not for them to understand the things of God, but it is for you. Because we have the Holy Spirit of God. When he speaks of the things of God, we have an understanding. The Holy Spirit of God is the one that is teaching us all of these things in, in the Bible. I, I, I just went to a, a men's conference where they had like six different pastors there. Six different, very, very good pastors that were teaching teaching stuff out of the Bible. I've, I've had very good teachers throughout my time as a Christian now. And, and um. You know, as, as long as I, I've had all these different teachers that I have, have access to, I listen to different Bible studies on the radio all day long. And, and um, you know, and, and I know that all of these, all, I've access to all these different teachings from different people, which is all wonderful and all. But, but ultimately, I am taught of by the Holy Spirit of God. If it wasn't for the Holy Spirit of God, I would not have that kind of understanding. So therefore, when before you read your Bible, you should pray that you would have that understanding to be filled with his Holy Spirit. And that, that's what it means to be born again, is pray to God in heaven, say, Lord, give me your Holy Spirit. I want to, I want to draw close to you. I want to learn more. I want my eyes open. I want my ears open so that I can have understanding. I open my heart to you, Lord. I ask you to come into my heart and to fill me with your spirit that when my time comes, that just like Lazarus, that even though I die, I will live. I pray these things in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, I do pray for anybody that's listening to the message, Lord, that they have, have an understanding that all they have to do is ask you into their heart, Lord, that you will enter in and be faithful. You would be faithful in that, Lord, and help them to come to you. Lord, I pray that they, they search their own hearts to see how their walk is with you. Maybe they are lame. Maybe, maybe they're, um, they're deaf. Maybe they're blind. But Lord, open their eyes and open their ears. And Lord, when, when, when they, they finally do receive you and receive the forgiveness that you have to offer, that they will come and praise, Lord, and that their, their mouth will be loosed, Lord, that they will have a reason to give praise of you being a part of their life because they love you, Lord. That, that your name would be on their lips, that they would tell others about you also, Lord. We're so thankful. Pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. Casey, I love that section of scripture, especially when the... Um, when Jesus is is there with his friends, and they say, you know, if you, if you would have been here, Lazarus would would not have died. <laughs> and Jesus is going to show, watch. <laughs> here, yeah, I thought both, it was kind of I thought it was kind of rehearsed because they both said it. Both sisters said the same thing. If you were here, he would not have died. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I uh, that that. That truly is. And, and the other fun fact of that one is if Jesus didn't say Lazarus, if he just said, come forth. Oh, yeah. I might have cleared the graveyard out. <laughs> well, yeah, that's you. a good one. Well, thank you so much, Casey, for sharing tonight. And oh, I just I, I love hearing you and you know speak with uh, with the authority of the word. And, and, you know, half the things you say are are out of the bible and you know how near and dear that is to my heart because i love singing god's word so i love it when you share and um minister god's word to your people can i pray for you real quick oh that would be great thank you oh casey i am so thankful for this man god i just ask you to continue to heal the the things that you're healing in his life god i pray that you would continue as ministry that you you would let him abound abounding grace and 
in knowledge and wisdom and might, and that you would continue to provide for his people or those Monday night lion's den people, God, provide for them food and especially the food that never, ever ends, that your word will continually abound in their lives. I thank you for his participation in all these Red's Room activities, God. I just thank you that, that he's here and he's such a, a neat voice to have. And I just thank you for him. Continue to make his way straight, continue to order his path and to guide his steps. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, another side point there, uh, TJ. Uh, many of you guys know that uh, I, I had a stroke about a year ago, a little over a year ago. And um, I, so I've been going to my doctor's appointments and they told me, um, like the neurologist told me, I don't have to come back for another year. So he says he thinks I'm fully recovered, which is, you know, praise God. Mm -hmm. But my my um, primary doctor, I went to go see and and uh, he says, uh, 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 he comes out of, out, out to the, out to, to see me in the, his office and he's holding his little uh, clipboard and he says, he says, "Yeah, I got news. You're 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 gonna die." I'm like, oh, you know, my 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 doctor. He's he he he's got a sense of humor, and he says, <laughs> "Yeah, you're gonna die." And I'm looking up at him like, "What, doctor?" He goes, "Yeah, but just not anytime soon." <laughs> <laughs> okay, doc, that's a no, good one. <laughs> nothing to give you a heart attack. But that's, that's, an, doctors, yeah, but that's that's an opportunity to share with him my faith. You know that. That I'm a born again Christian. I do not plan. I plan on living forever. I will be forever with the Lord, and that is our hope that we will live. Mm, All right. Yes. Well, thank you, TJ. Well, thank you, Casey. Casey Bean, coming to you from the the middle of LA, uh, South LA, actually. And I'm just so glad he's here tonight. And 